rather than insane? And they're amazed. They're amazed. And um, right, rightfully so, because only the power of Jesus Christ could cast out a legion of these demonics. And you know what? And that's so important because there are legions of these things coming. And uh, many, there are many evil spirits on the earth today as well. But when we get to that fifth trumpet, from that point on, we're going to see many, many more of these things. And, um, and it's important that we're aware of them. And that we read these examples so that we can, so that we can be prepared. Prepared to handle um, things that most people don't even understand or, or even believe that they exist. You know, what better way for these things to control people yeah, um, to get to kind of take them over or just even deceive them if they don't even believe they exist? It's kind of like saying, uh, I don't believe there's a devil. You know, I've actually heard Christians say that in the past. There's no devil. There's not really a Satan. Oh, man, if you start buying into that, Satan has already got you duped. Already. Um, but anyways, so we went there to document what was in that abyss. Again, so that we know what comes out of it in Revelation chapter 9. But let's go to another place. Jude verse 6. And it reads, and it, and it says, And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. Who, who were these angels that kept not their first estate? Well, we know from Genesis chapter 6 that a group of fallen angels came from heaven to the earth and actually had uh, sexual relations with the daughters of Adam, uh, producing a hybrid people called the giants. And many of you have heard the story of David versus Goliath. He was just one out of many giants that were here upon this earth. And uh, so when God brought about Noah's flood, he also bound these fallen angels up into this place, the abyss. So... Think about that when we go back to Revelation chapter 9 and remember that that same group of wicked fallen angels are in that pit. And what does that mean? Well, they're coming back. They're coming back to this earth to do the things they did before and probably even, mu even much uh, greater things than those. And uh, will they also be uh, going after women? Well, you bet they will. They're not going to change. And, you know, a lot of people misread this verse here. It says that they are kept in chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. Some people think, well, they're just locked away until the great white throne judgment. And then they're going to be judged and, uh, you know, exterminated. However, what this means here is they are being reserved in that place in that abyss until the time that God gives um, Satan the key to the abyss and he opens them and allows them to be sent forth as a judgment against those who are deceived. And that is key to understanding the fifth trumpet. So put mark that verse down in your Bible or in your notes and make sure you connect that with what's going to happen in the fifth trumpet. Um, so let's go, let's go back to Revelation chapter 9 and let's read about this. All right, verse 3, And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and to them was given power as the scorpions of the earth have power. Well, now we know that these aren't real locusts. And that these locusts symbolize those evil beings, those evil wicked spirits that are captive in that place. So let's continue on. Verse 4, And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, 
But check this out. But only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. You know, that is ever so important now and in the future to have that protection from Almighty God surrounding you so that none of these wicked things can penetrate into your mind and take over and control you because wickedness, evilness is penetrating the minds of so many today. Why? Because they don't have the seal of God and, um, you know, covering their mind. But how do we get that seal of God? Well, simply by studying God's word and asking him with sincerity for understanding, for wisdom, for knowledge, so that you can take his word and protect yourself. And also so that you can take it and help others. And then he will protect you. He will place that seal upon you. Uh, for it is written in Revelation chapter 7, we read it uh, a couple studies ago, that there were four angels holding the four winds of the earth, basically the, the things that bring about the end times. And they were told to stop, to wait. Do not let things happen until the servants of God were sealed in their foreheads. You know, until they were protected. And um, many of you have that protection around you today. You can just sense it. You can feel it. You know, I, there's been times in my life where I've been around somebody with an evil spirit. Somebody who was possessed. And and had, and had uh, when they were, when that spirit in that individual um, was attacking, I always felt a, a, just a, a sense of calmness come about me. You know, when you would think it would be the opposite. You'd think that there would be fear, there would be fear, there'd be anger. But it's not like that because you know what? That wall and that presence of the Holy Spirit warms and comforts you. Even during those times of uh, spiritual combat. Even during those times when those wicked spirits are surrounding you. You know, you can just smile and know that you are protected. And that is ever so important because I think it's Psalms chapter 91, perhaps, where it talks about um, toward in the end days that there would be 10,000 fallen at your left hand, or left hand, 10,000 at your right hand, but it would not come nigh thee. Meaning, people would be being deceived, people would be getting hit with the plagues of the end times, the pestilences. But yet it would not hurt you because you would fall under that protection. So that's who they would hurt. Verse 5, And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months. And their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he striketh a man. Now, that word torment is quite interesting. It's, it's actually, when it's used, it's most often used in connection, um, would you guess, with demons, with evil spirits. And I believe it was in that chapter we just read or in other places that this word is used in connection when, uh, when one of those evil spirits was actually inside of a person and it was causing them pain and discomfort. And uh, bringing about misery, bringing about sadness, bringing about depression, bringing about confusion. All kinds of things that destroy a person. And I believe that this is what it's describing. You know, if you could think of it in the, in the spiritual realm, you could think of when somebody gets attacked by an evil spirit and they do not have the seal of God. Think of it as that scorpion stinger just piercing into them and gaining control over their whole body, their whole central nervous system, because that's how a scorpion takes its prey. You know, most often when scorpions sting someone, it doesn't cause death, but, um, but it causes them severe pain, severe swelling, severe convulsions, severe stomach ache. You know, basically so many different symptoms and, uh, 
and reactions that the person's just shaking in pain and torment, wishing that it would just end. You know, in fact, I think it gets to the point here. Yes, it does. In verse 6, where it says, well, let's read it. And it says, in those days shall men seek death and shall not find it and shall desire to die and death shall flee from them. Meaning that they are in such pain and such agony that they would rather just die than continue on feeling like this. Um, what does this mean exactly? Well, you take it to mean, you know, you do your own homework and make your own decision. But it seems here that these evil spirits are going to roam the earth so heavy and with such an amount of um, rage against the people that they inhabit that it's not going to be it's not going to be a good time for them and uh, verse 7 and the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle and on their heads were as it uh, were crowns like gold and their faces were as the faces of men so here we you know we're given a you know a little bit more description concerning them and obviously, they're not real locusts because they have faces of men, hair like women, you know, which kind of reminds me or kind of makes me think of how Satan and his demonics deceive. Even how false teachers deceive. They come at you all, you know, gentle, gentle like a woman, you know, like the long hair. And uh, they just say, you know, peace and and love to everybody and we're going to be raptured out of here before the end and uh, you know what well I don't know if I read that let me just make sure I read that verse verse 8 and they had hair as the hair of women and their teeth were as the teeth of lions so that's what I'm trying to describe here but they, they, they come off so gentle but with their deception they rage with anger